okay? And uh, um, a as a uh, reminder of uh, the reality of life, we want to celebrate um, John and Kelly Buffy and the birth of Hosanna Joy. I know I saw them here somewhere. Right. Hey, it's in the back. Good to see you guys. Congratulations again. And uh, Hosanna Joy is uh, indeed indeed a joy. And uh, we're, we're so glad that you guys are here to, uh, to celebrate with us this morning. And uh, we celebrate with you and your family. Uh, and we also want to celebrate uh, uh, Josh and Sonia Inglis in the birth of uh, Harrison uh, this week. So praise God for, for all these all these lives, and we are we are going to grow the church in multiple ways. Um, but it's it's all about new life, and um, and that's what we're here to celebrate uh, this morning is is life, the life that we have in in Christ. And there's some things that you have in your life that you might like to keep secret. Uh, for example, if you are one of those guys here today that likes to watch chick flicks. You might keep that a secret, right? You might not be telling everybody that you watch the Hallmark Channel. You know, some of those closets, uh, Hallmark Channel watchers, you may, guys may want to keep that a secret. Uh, if you're afraid of the dark, that may be something that you are not uh, always telling everyone. You might keep that a secret. Or maybe you sing in the shower. That might not be too secretive. How many of you sing in the shower? What's wrong Come with on. that? Come on. But it might not be something that uh, that you always uh, announce publicly, or maybe you're like a bird watcher, uh, and you're kind of embarrassed about this, but you think it's really neat, and so you keep it uh, kind of a secret. Um, but you know, a good relationship doesn't work like that. A good relationship is never uh, kept a secret. And when you get into a relationship, uh, it's not something that you can really keep secret because people know, uh, people see in relationship that, um, like that you're happier. When you get into a good relationship, they notice that you're happier, uh, right? When you get into a good relationship, they notice that you're always with uh, that person. Uh, they see that your, your life plans are changing. When you get into a good relationship with someone, the, your life plans change. And they influence you in ways that are obvious to others. And when you have a relationship with someone who is in the very nature God, who took on flesh and blood, and who died a criminal's death to shed his blood for the atonement of your sins, and who rose again the third day and is returning, when you have a relationship with someone like that, your life has to change, amen? Amen. And having a relationship with Jesus is going to be pretty obvious. And part of the reason for that is things like what Ephesians 2 uh, says, that, that we have been, uh, we were dead in our transgressions and sins. We were dead in our transgressions and sins, and he made us alive together with him. That's pretty obvious, to come from death to life. That we're told that we've been born again that we've been made righteous, that we've been given a new identity as a son and a daughter of God. This is big stuff. This is stuff you can't keep secret. It's stuff to announce. It's stuff to celebrate. You know, there's no closet Christians. And baptism is, it's an outer thing. Baptism is a public thing. And there's really, uh, there's really three things that, that baptism uh, is, is about. It's about repentance it's about identity, and it's about empowerment. And uh, the first is repentance. So in Acts 2, and this is where uh, Jesus, after his uh, ascension, he tells his, his disciples, uh, he, he tells them to stay here in Jerusalem. Don't go anywhere. I don't want you to go back to your lives. I want you to stay here. He says, because I told you that you would receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you would be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and to the ends of the earth. And he says, but wait here. Because I'm going to send the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so this is what, uh, this is what happens. They begin, uh, they're filled with the Holy Spirit and they begin to preach the gospel there in Jerusalem in different languages and people from all over, from different cultures and lands and different values and different backgrounds are hearing this message of the gospel. And this is what happens. It says in Acts 2, now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart 
and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brother, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So our walk with, with Christ begins with repentance. And repentance, as you may know, often people, when we think about repentance, we think about going a different way, and, and that's definitely true. But before you go a different way, you need to change your mind. And that's what repentance is. Repentance is literally a change of mind. Well, what is it that we repent of? What is it that we would change our minds about before we become Christians? We change our minds about who God is. We change our minds about, about his love for us and that the reality that he died for us and that he has purpose for us because we've been living apart from that. And we change our minds about who we are and we acknowledge that we're sinners, like that we're lost, that we're separated from God and that we need a savior and we need to stop being trying to be our own savior and Lord. And so repentance is an internal thing, but baptism is an external thing. And you see, the gospel demands a response. Jesus says things like, if anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and, and follow me. Jesus says things like, like, whoever wishes to save his life must lose it for my sake. If you try, if you try to save your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you are going to gain it. So it's firstly about repentance. But secondly, baptism is about identity. Is about having a new identity in Jesus. And Romans 6 speaks so pointedly to what we're doing here today. And Paul says this, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. So he's answering this argument from Romans 5 that talks about that where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. And some people would be like, okay, well, so if I sin more, I'm going to get more grace. And Paul's saying, no, may it not be. He says, by no means, how can, and this is what he says about our identity, how can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, that we too might walk in newness of life. He says, just as, it's in the same way. That's what baptism is about. That in the same way, just as Jesus was, was buried, with, that he died, that he buried and rose again, in the same way, that's what baptism represents for us as believers. That through baptism, that our old, sinful, selfish selves have been put to death and that we have been resurrected with Christ spiritually. Amen? Amen. And that we have the very life of Christ in us. And we know that the gospel, you know, a lot of religions say, well, we're, it's going to give you a better life. The gospel doesn't offer us a better life. The gospel offers us a new life. And that's what baptism represents. And today we're going to hear some of the stories of new life. We're going to hear some of the stories of life change this morning from people who've already believed the gospel, who've given their lives to Christ, who've made him Lord. And today is a public acknowledgement of that. Um, in, in just a few days, uh, our son Matthew is going to be getting married. Um, so that's really exciting. And uh, marriage is about a covenant. So they're going to stand uh, before me and before their, their family and friends in just a few days. And they're going to make a covenant to each other, a promise to love each other uh, until death. It's a covenant that they make uh, together. But then what happens after they take those vows together? What do we do then? Who knows? What's the next thing? Anybody married here? <laughs> what happens right after the vows? All right, I see, I see my, my other daughter is showing her, her fingers here, right? It's the rings. So what happens is that we say, we say in the wedding ceremony, after the vows are made, after the covenants, the words of covenant are made, we say, what visible sign do you have? What visible sign do you have of this inward commitment of covenant that you're making today? And they say, the rings. And the rings are, it's, it's outward evidence of an inward commitment. And that's really what baptism is for us today. It's a public ceremony of the conversion that's taken place in our hearts. 
that we're saying that I'm a follower of Jesus, right? That I belong. It's different now. I belong to the one who purchased me. Just like that marriage covenant, we're saying, I belong to you, honey. I belong to you. That's what we're saying to Jesus. I belong to the one who purchased me with his own blood. That I'm surrendered to Jesus and my life's aim is to become like him as I walk with him daily. It's a repentance of our old self and becoming a new person under the lordship of Jesus Christ. But finally, it's about empowerment. So Jesus tells us, or actually John the Baptist tells us, as he's baptizing, a baptism of repentance. He says, the one who comes after me, speaking of Jesus, he says that he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That's powerful. He says that you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And if you think about it, if you think about how can we live in this new identity, if we're new people, if we've been buried with Jesus and we've been raised to new life again, how is it that we could possibly live lives like Jesus lived? We can't live resurrected lives apart from the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And that comes from the Holy Spirit that he promises as a gift that we receive when we're born again. And that's what baptism symbolizes as well. And it's a demonstration of what it's like to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And what's going to happen in just a few minutes as we bring people into the water, we're going to put them completely under the water. That's why we believe in immersion. That's why we don't just sprinkle people. That we put them completely under the water because it's a sign. It's a symbol. It's an outward demonstration of, of how the Holy Spirit fills us. The Spirit of God saturates every aspect of our lives, right? We go under. We're covered with the water. There's nothing, when, when, when you come up out of the water, for those that are getting baptized, there's nothing in your body that's not going to be wet. And, and that's what his goal is for the Holy Spirit in our lives, to saturate us completely and to fill us. And so uh, after we do the baptisms today, we're going to be praying for the Holy Spirit to saturate, to fill all of those that are baptized today in that same way. Uh, just like we went under the water and we're, we're covered and saturated. And so I want to ask you this morning, because I don't know everybody that's here, if you are here uh, with us and this is either your first time or you're not necessarily a part of Sojourner Church, we are really, really glad that you're here this morning to celebrate this with us. And you may be here and you may not even really understand, what is this about? I'm just here to support my friend or my family member. But that's what it's about this morning. It's about finding new life with Jesus. It's about our old self our sinful self that's separated from God, being buried, being crucified, and that our new life is resurrected in Christ. That's what it's about. So do you have a relationship with Jesus? Is he the Lord of your life? And you've heard this scripture, whether you're a Christian or not, you've heard this scripture because you see it at every football game you watch. It's John 3:16. It's the most well-known verse uh, in all of the world. But there's a reason for that because it's so powerful, it's life-changing. And the message is that God loved the world so much, he loved you so much that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him wouldn't perish, wouldn't be separated from God because of their sins, but would have eternal life. And that is the message of the gospel. And we always say that the gospel is not good advice, it's good news. Because it's not something that you do, it's something that happens to you when you give your life to Christ. And so, if you're here today, and this message is somehow speaking to your heart, we invite you to join us in the waters of baptism today. And we're going to give an opportunity after everyone's done, that if there's someone here that God is prompting you, he's speaking to your heart to, to surrender your life to Christ today, we're going to invite you to be baptized as well. And uh, it's, it's going to be an amazing time. So... Uh, we're going to uh, invite those that are that are going to get baptized, and what we're going to do is I'll call you up. Uh, we're going to kind of call you up by by individual or by family, and um, what's going to happen is we've invited all those that are being baptized today. We've invited them to share testimony with you. Now we've left it optional because we recognize that that can be su super intimidating uh, to speak in front of people, even people as beautiful as you. 
Uh, so we have left it optional, so some may not share, uh, but we've also invited anyone who wants to share their testimony about how Jesus has changed their life to do that, and I know that we're going to be really encouraged by that. And so actually we're going to start with, uh, with some of my, uh, my newer friends this morning, Montana and uh, his wife, Angela. Uh, and his daughter, Adriana, who uh, have become a part of, of uh, our Sojourn family uh, over the last number of months. And I've been seeing God do really neat things in their family. And so we're, uh, we're super grateful uh, that they want to be baptized this morning and that they want to celebrate that with us. So you guys can come on up and uh, let's, give them, let's give them a hand. And then next on deck, uh, we have uh, we have Connor Sanaswaso, and then we'll have Holly Buffy. So those are the next ones coming up. So come on up here. And uh, did you uh, are you going to share sure. anything? So. Hi everyone. Hi. Hello. Um, so today I am here with my wife Angela and my daughter Adriana. Some of you I've met being at church for the last few weeks and uh, I just want to say that to get me here took a lot. Um, I was in a bad place. Uh, Appreciate you. This means God's working, man. These are the most powerful stories when you can't get them out. You just take your time. Um, first, I want to thank God, honestly, because uh, to get me here, I had to fight a lot. I was losing, um, I was losing an internal fight. And I almost gave up. But I, um, I couldn't leave my wife and daughter to fight on their own. I was fighting through depression, anxiety, self-hatred. I was killing myself inside. And, uh, man. I was fighting things that I honestly couldn't have got through on my own. And uh, I had to recognize that. And uh, I found my way here through scripture. I've heard plenty of testimonies my whole life. And uh, at some part, I had to realize I had a really hardened heart and uh, nothing Nothing could penetrate it because I wouldn't allow anything to penetrate it because I felt like I was alone and I wasn't going to get through it. And uh, my, um, my wife and daughter deserved more than that. Um, but before I could do that for them, I had to recognize that I also deserved more than what I was given myself. And uh, the only way I could possibly break through any of that was through God's word. And uh, I started with the book of John. And uh, those first few lines really opened it up for me. 
and it was something that I couldn't ignore and honestly it, it was a crack and that crack got the biggest hole blown through it the more I kept reading and slowly I can feel the devil leaving my life and I could recognize in every single part of my life where he was tearing me down and uh, it started with me on my own and then I brought it in um, into my family's life and uh, I started telling my wife, hey, I, I think we gotta pay attention to this. And uh, at that moment, it was definitely tough because I, uh, I rejected God in, in so many ways. And uh, I'm crying because I know I don't deserve any of this. And um, going in here is just, the last step of that commitment and um, to stand here with my wife and daughter it, uh, it means everything to me so thank you all for everyone who has shown me a lot of love um, this is seriously life changing so I'll end with that I don't know if my wife and daughter want to share anything so much for sharing that Montana we're so gl so glad to have you with us uh, today and have you part of our family um, what we're gonna be doing this morning as we do for for each baptism is we're gonna be asking uh, each person uh, two questions and we're going to, to say uh, publicly we're gonna ask them have you repented of your sins uh, and have you given your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior uh, and then we're going to ask them if they commit to following them all the days of their life. Uh, so I know it may be a little bit hard uh, to hear that out here, uh, but that's what we're going to be. That's what we're going to be saying, and uh, we're going to we're going to dunk them, and then we're going to celebrate together. So you guys want to? All right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Angela. Hi, everybody. Hello. I just wanted to first introduce myself because I don't think anybody knows me here. Um, my name is Angela. I'm Montana's wife and my daughter's Adriana. Uh, for different limitations that I have, I'm unable to come to church on Sundays. Um, but I, you know, watch all the, all the gatherings live on Sundays. And then on Fridays, my daughter and I discuss what she has like learned in the youth group on uh, the different church members that she meets and I want us to say thank you to everybody for making my husband and my daughter feel so welcome and so cared about and you know through them I also feel like I belong even though I you know can't be a church for different limitations that I have um, I also feel like this is my church and my community and I feel like I belong um, and then um, the reason why I chose to be baptized today is because after a very long time, um, I started to read the Bible again last summer. And this time it was from the beginning and consistently. And the more I read, the more and discussed with my husband and my mom, the more I realized that although I already believed um, in some of the concepts that that was just part of being Christian but I also realized that my relationship with God was more like a world worldly kind of perspective and thinking that I could create kind of my own standards or be you know smart enough to realize what's truth and what's real and the more I read I realized okay well I can't do that and my relationship with God needs to be based on scripture and on his terms and so being baptized is like another step of doing that because it is on on God's terms he wants all of us to, to do this and um, and I identify with Christ and I am you know ready to live this life where I am intentionally turning away sin and for me that means being aware of where the devil may be trying to come in into my life um, affect my relationships, my decision making, anything like that. Um, and I want to serve God. And again, 
um, thank you to everybody and it's so nice to finally meet you guys and you know um, I, I do exist I know some of you guys have, have heard about me during the man's breakfast with my husband um, and I am grateful for my husband talking to us and getting us really closer to God and keeping the devil away from our house and so that's why I'm getting repented of your sins and received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you commit to follow him all the days of your life? Yes. Well then, Montana, we baptize you. If you want to hold your nose, you can. Uh, but we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory! sins and received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yes, I have. And you commit to follow him all the days of your life. I do. So, Angela, we baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. just an act of obedience today for her to say I'm following Jesus but that we would invite Jesus to touch her in a really powerful way and bring healing to her so would you would you just agree with us for that today Lord thank you God for this family Lord Lord we thank you for the work family Lord thank you for what you're doing in their lives we thank you that you Jesus Christ are Lord over this family uh, we thank you for for the light in their lives that 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 uh, pushes out the darkness uh, lord we thank you today jesus that you are our savior that you're our sanctifier but you're also our healer and lord we ask for uh for angela today lord we ask uh, in your mercy in your grace lord would you bring healing to her body lord god lord for every sensitivity uh lord for every uh physical challenge that she has in the name of jesus lord 
pray your wholeness over her now, Lord, even as she stands in uh, the waters of baptism today, Lord, as she stands in uh, what represents your spirit today, Lord, would you fill her with your spirit, uh, and, and would you bring wholeness to her in the name of Jesus, Lord? We're asking you for healing, Lord. We're asking you for a miracle for her. Lord, we're asking for a testimony, Lord, that goes even beyond her soul to her body, Lord. Because we declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, not just of her soul, but over her body. In the name of Jesus, and we thank you today for your healing. We thank you for your restoration, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we pray, uh, God, we pray for Montana and for Adriana uh, and, and for Angela today. Uh, for the filling of your spirit, Lord, just as they've been immersed in this water today, Lord, that you would immerse them in your spirit. Lord, I pray that they would even sense a difference uh, in their lives, Lord, as they publicly said, we are followers of Jesus, uh, that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit and power uh, to walk with you and that they would sense your presence in a powerful way. We thank you for them. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 church my whole life, but it wasn't until recently that I thought seriously about being baptized. I believe that Jesus died for me and that he has saved me, and that he has helped me be at peace and grow in my relationship with him to go deeper into to my faith and understanding. Especially in the past, these past few years, I am proud to be a child of God, and I'm glad that I have an opportunity to get baptized. Uh, and so, as you'll see, different people uh, joining us in the water this morning, uh, I love to invite uh, people who have had uh, an, uh, a particular impact in discipling uh, those people to join us. What a privilege and what an honor. And my prayer is that, that every one of us would have people that we're bringing into the water at some point, that every one of you would have the privilege of being able to, to, to lead someone to Christ or be part of their spiritual journey and be able to baptize them. Uh, and especially for, for uh, husbands and fathers. Uh, and so uh, this is, if you don't know, this is uh, Connor's dad, John, uh, who's, a, who's a friend of mine. And, and of course, we have asked him uh, as the primary uh, discipler of his son to, to be part of his baptism celebration. We're going to call up uh, Holly, Holly Buffy, and uh, her dad, John. It's going to be part of her baptism. Uh, and after that, uh, we're going to call up uh, Sadie and Henry Benson, uh, and their dad, uh, Justin, is going to be uh, helping to baptize them.
gonna share some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's the mic and yeah. share. I'm excited. Hello. Hi. Woo! Um, though I have always perceived myself as a follower of Jesus, I never truly lived or acted like one. I was self seeking and arrogant, giving into the temptations and desires of my flesh, thinking it could fill, could fill me, but it only ever left me feeling empty. I knew I needed to change, and many times I thought I had, but I didn't formally allow God to work in and through my life without seeking the benefits of myself. It wasn't until recently where I had a moment of great conviction in my heart, realizing that I needed Jesus and wanted my life to be centered on Him and only Him. Um, I think... It's okay. It's doing great. I thank God every day for the amount of grace and mercy He's given me and for the love He has shown me through my family and closest friends. Despite how deserving I am for the um, for the blessings I receive from the Lord with the people He's put in my life, I am grateful for their faith alone brings me encouragement every day. I have let go of my old ways, and since then, now I can say I'm no longer a slave to my sin, but a daughter of the King. Amen. Woo! Have you repented of your sins and given your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And do you commit to follow him all the days of your life? Holly, today we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Something, right? Yeah. Does he have something? Yes. Oh. Uh, you want to help him, Sadie? Here you go. Show him how it's done. Yeah. <laughs> um. So it's really short, but I was really young when I asked God into my heart, but I did it over and over again because I wanted it to be perfect and I wanted it to be special. But after like a year, I realized that God came to this earth. It wasn't special. He was born in a stable. Like, he wasn't a king or anything. So God wants us to come to him as we are. He doesn't want us to be special. He just wants us to come to him as we are. And, yeah.
All right, Sadie, have you repented of your sins and given your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And do you commit to follow him all the days of your life? Yes. Then today we baptize you. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yes. And do you commit to follow him all the days of your life? Yes. All right. Henry, we baptize you today in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, I thank you for this day. I want to thank you for uh, Sadie and Henry God and their desire to uh, follow you, Lord. I just pray that you be with them today, God, and may they feel your love and your presence, God, that, uh, that they are no longer their own, that they've been bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, God, and that they're to present their bodies of living sacrifice. Allow them to feel your love and your presence, your spirit empowering them, God. Allow them to be a light in this world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So they were shivering out there, but you know, they are in our drama program, so <laughs> it's really not that cold in here. Um, next, we got uh, JD and Kylie. So, so this is really cool. Uh, the other half of the Schweizer family, the first half got baptized last September, and now this is the completion. And so I know JD is going to share the testimony. So I told him he had to. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Good morning. I'm not used to being tall. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so uh, I stand before you, everybody this morning, just really grateful. Uh, grateful that I call everyone my family here in this church. You know, I, uh, I shared something last November that really talked a little bit about like what this church has meant for our whole family on this path. But today is so special to me because as we, you know, get baptized I get to do this with my youngest daughter and it's just like a beautiful thing you know? and when, I, when when Tom asked me to share like briefly I really don't do anything briefly but um, in the spirit of that there's been something that's kind of been on my heart lately and we've been studying a lot and reading a lot out of the book of James and I think about how that one of the verses starts off and it's faith without works is dead and I think about my journey here the past year and a half, almost two years, it really resembles a lot what those few words say. And um, I guess when you're saved in like middle, like, like I'm middle aged, and when you're saved at 45 years old, I couldn't have the faith one day just to kind of get out of bed and say, I accept Jesus Christ as my savior. You know, for me, it had to be the works part. It had to be the action part. And uh, I would love to say it was my action, you know, but it wasn't. It was your action. It was that God was speaking to me through you, through you all. And I'm so lucky, like I think about spiritual sayings and how when the student's ready, the teacher will appear and how grateful I am that I have so many teachers here, so many disciples here, you know, that were those examples for me. And as I was on this journey, you guys would stick to the, your guns, so to say, and you would come right out of scripture and Tom knows I would reject, not fight, but not argue, but I wouldn't accept. But what was consistent with the faith without works is dead was your actions remain consistent. And I, I think about how time went on over that year. And little by little, I felt like I was going one step backwards, two steps forward, actually. I started to accept more than I was just denying. But what remained consistent 
what all you guys were doing was your actions. And it was a beautiful thing. You know, for a guy like me, as I continued on this path, and by November of last year, I started to be able to reconcile your actions with what was in the scripture, what was fact, you know? And um, like I said, I, I spoke last November. It was actually November 26, 2023. It was the day that I accepted Jesus into my heart. And what I didn't share that day was the fact that I woke up early that day. It was a Sunday morning, of course. And Tom asked me just a couple days prior if I would speak and share my experience of our family kind of getting connected at Sojourn through the Theater Arts Academy. And as I was kind of thinking through what I'm gonna say, of course I had, I guess what you would talk about, the devil speaking to me saying, you're a hack, you can't do this, and all the negativity going on between my ears. And I remember I, I was, in, like, like Sadie said, she said, it's so great, like Jesus will meet you where you are if you just let him, right? And I'm in my bathroom, we have a small house, so I was just kind of, you know, in there looking at my notes. And I was overcome with joy. I can't even describe the feeling. It was like I had ching chills, tingles throughout my entire body, you know. The only thing I kind of regret about that day is that I didn't speak that, that message and include that message that day. And that's why I wanted to do that today, you know. And it's funny because like a couple days after, and Tom probably, you probably remember this. I remember calling Tom, or maybe, I, I think I went over at your house to pick up Kylie. And I was kind of sharing my experience that Sunday morning when I was coming to Jesus with him. And I asked Tom, and I'm like, Tom, did you know this all along? Did you know that me hearing, like, like me hearing myself sharing my experience on how, what God's doing in our lives, more specifically Jesus, if that was really more or less gonna push me into the end zone and get me to that point. And Tom kind of laughed because I'm sitting here and I'm, as I'm saying it, it sounds ridiculous. Tom, I love you, but you don't have that power. There are, you guys taught me better. There is one that does have that power and he gets the glory. So, so other than that, I mean, I, I really don't have, a, like I said, this is brief for me, you know? <laughs> I, I, I do think that like, you know, when, when I, the best testimony that Kylie and I can give today and going back to the theme of faith without works is dead, going back to the action that I can verbally sit here and say, I repent for my sins, that I accept Jesus Christ in my heart. But the biggest thing I can do for my testimony is to get baptized. Mm. I love you all. Mm. I did forget to mention for those that are being baptized today and you want to uh, afterwards and you want to get changed, uh, Doug Brennan was gracious enough to drive his RV here as our changing room. So over here, if you head a little bit that way, you'll see a pretty large RV and that is your changing room for the day. Uh, so you're welcome to go in there and change. So I, I neglected to, to say that. But thanks for sharing that, brother. It was powerful. JD, have you repented of your sins and received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And do you commit to follow him all the days of your life? I do. Well, JD, we baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
this day, God, the symbol of baptism, being dead to themselves and alive in you. And Lord, with that, we pray for the filling of the Holy Spirit. God, I thank you that you want to fill them with all that you have, all the measure, Lord. So I pray, filling, fill them with your presence, God, that they will walk with you in your, all the days of their lives. Thank you so much that you want to do that in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We got Gabriel. Where's Gabriel? And then uh, Lydia, wherever you are, you can get ready. You're next. Did you have something you want to share? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't know how many of you actually know me. I've only actually been going to this church for around uh, five months. And then the past three months of those five months, I was gone for training. Um, I guess for me, um, I got saved when I worked security before joining the Coast Guard about two and a half years ago. And I had a great relationship with God during those times and I felt close and I felt like I had the ability to tackle anything and I fell on top. Um, then I joined the military and I, I love the military but um, I did my first tour on a Coast Guard cutter out of Portsmouth and I spent a year on the, on the water. Uh, when you're on the water, it's, I found myself surrounded by just a lot of evil, and I started to lose what I had with God, and I didn't have, I didn't have what I had in security before I joined the military, and I found myself struggling to maintain that connection with God on the water, and just the things that I saw on that boat, and the people I was around, um, I really struggled to stay connected. So I did a year on that cutter, and realistically, the only thing that kept me going was my prayers to Jesus to deliver me. And I knew that once I left that boat, that things would get a lot better, and I knew that I just had to make it to that. Um, one of my favorite verses, Proverbs twenty four sixteen, says, A righteous man will fall seven times, and get back up again, but a wicked man will fall in calamity. And I knew I'm not a wicked man because I was saved. So I was gonna be the righteous man, and no matter how hard it was, how many times I fell, I knew I was gonna get back up again. Five months ago, I got stationed at Atlantic City Air Station, and I met the Carols, and they have been monumental in my ability to get back on the right side of my relationship with Christ. And one thing that Rick has asked me a lot, and I've been thinking about it since I got here, is he would always ask me that I know, he's, he would always say, I know God wants to teach you something, and you just need to figure out what that is. And I've been kind of resting on that a lot, trying to figure out what that is. And I feel like God is putting me in a season of obedience. And I feel like I've been trying to find ways to overdo and, and crawl my way and use my own works. But I understand that it's all laid out in the Bible for me to just be obedient. And I have not been baptized since I was saved. So this is my first step in obedience to do away with my sins, addictions, and anything evil. I rebuke it. So this is my first step. Yeah, boy. Christ is your Lord and Savior. I have. 
and do you commit to follow him all the days of your life? I do. Gabriel, we baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for Gabriel. I thank you, God, for uh, his journey, Lord, that brought him to this place and this time, Lord. And I thank you, God, for his ability to hear your voice and be able to step out, Lord, in boldness and, and, and publicly claim, Lord, uh, your goodness and your mercy in his life. Uh, so as we just baptized him today in the water, Father, I'm asking, Lord, that Gabriel would receive a baptism of the Holy Spirit that would become so real in his life, God, that it would be unmistakable, Lord, that he would never doubt, never question, never wonder, but he would always know, Father God, that you are Lord over his life. And I just pray, Father, that you would continue to help him on his journey, Lord, to follow you and be the man that you have called him to be. So we just celebrate him today. We thank you for him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I've always been a believer. I've raised in a Christian home, and it's nothing quite special, but I've always been afraid to show people who I am, so I'm here just to show I love Jesus and want to trust in him for all my life. Yeah, yeah girl. And after this, we got, we got Josh. repented of your sins and given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yes. And do you commit to follow him all the days of your life? Yes. Lydia, we baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, thank you so much, Lord, for, for Lydia. I thank you for this step that she's taking. Uh, this public acknowledgement that she is a follower of Christ. Uh, and so I pray, God, even today, Lord, that you would meet her in this act of obedience. Uh, and we ask, Lord, Holy Spirit, would you fill her? Uh, would you saturate her and immerse her uh, in your power, Lord, uh, in all that you are? And I pray that, that she would even experience a difference in her walk with you uh, from this day, that you would be able to point back to this day uh, that she did uh, publicly acknowledge uh, her uh, commitment to follow Jesus as Lord. And so we ask the Spirit of God that you would fill her, that you would empower her, and that you would uh, go before her on this journey uh, and give her a kingdom vision for her life, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yeah. <laughs> morning, soldier. Good morning. I'm uh I'm Josh, and I'm uh, here with my my wife Caitlin and, and our kids John and Eleanor. Um, I just want to thank everyone for how welcome they made us feel coming in. We we started coming to Soldier and Palm Sunday this year, and we just felt from day one that this was the right place for us. 
tried other churches before then, you know, and and um, we all agreed that, that this was the right place for us, it, except for maybe my son John, he still cries every week, but, <laughs> um, you know, I, I've always identified as a Christian growing up in a, in a church family that was involved a lot, but I, but I didn't make that decision for myself until I was like 13 at Bible camp. Um, but from that time, I really, I really never lived on fire for Christ. I kept my faith mostly to myself, um, and I never really felt much pull toward um, just the acts of faith, like baptism or communion, things like that. But just after recommitting my my life to Christ at the beginning of of 2020, when I really needed a lot of support. Um, God just showed me to trust in Him with everything. So today, I'm, I'm, do, I'm making a commitment to do that, and I'm all in. Um, I want God to work in every area of my life, so it points others to Christ. Um, today, I'm, I'm not ashamed anymore of the gospel, because it's it truly is what saves. So, thank you, Matt. of your sins and given your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Yes. And you commit to follow him all the days of your life. I do. And Josh, today we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, we got a whole family coming up, newcomers. Come on up. So newcomers are some of the newest comers of Sojourn. But after you're not newcomers anymore, what do we call you? So uh, do any of you guys have anything that you would like to share? Ava, newcomer. <laughs> um, I don't have much to say. I've been a believer all my life, but uh, I want to thank God especially but for his protection and his love and forgiveness, of course. I also want to thank my family, but especially my mom and dad, because they've always been there for me and lifted me up when I was always down. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rodney. It won't take you long to figure out I'm not from here. Um, 
I want to thank Pastor Tom for letting me uh, partake in the baptism of my children. Uh, there are few, fewer things that can make you more proud. Nothing can make you more proud than the day that they accept Christ and uh, are baptized and profess that faith. I want to especially thank my wife right here who took she took over being the she built the foundation in Christ. When I was a weak spiritual leader, she took the spot that should have been mine and she she built what they have. So thank you. I also want to thank God, even though I've always been a believer, and so has my family, so I was brought up in it. Um, I want to thank him for always being there for me when I struggled with anxiety, depression. I've gone through very hard times in my life, but I always have my parents and my siblings who are there for me, and God especially. You know, he when nobody else was, he was always walking beside me, his footsteps along mine. And I just want to give him my life in this lake and um, just lay down everything for him. Amen. repented of your sins and received okay, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you commit to follow him all the days of your life. And today we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have you repented of your sins and given your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I have. And do you commit to follow him all the days of your life? I do. Then, Ava, today we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You guys are all really close in age. Yes, yes. Yes. So, um, all right, Luke, have you repented of your sins and given your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And do you commit to follow him all the days of your life? I do. And today, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. to follow him all the days of your life. I do. Today we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for the newcomer family, Lord. And uh, Lord, we thank you that although they're newcomers to us, Lord, uh, we praise you that they're not newcomers to you. Uh, and we pray today, Lord, your blessing over this family, Lord God. Uh, we pray in the name of Jesus as they have taken this public declaration, uh, this step of faith and obedience that you would meet them in this. And we pray today that just as they have been immersed uh, in this water fully, uh, that you would immerse them in your spirit, Lord. 
We pray that just as they have been saturated with the waters of baptism today, Lord, that you would saturate them with your spirit, Lord. Uh, we pray for, uh, for every fear, for every anxiety, for every worry, for every concern, for every future uh, uncertainty, Lord. We pray that you would cover that uh, in, in the name of Jesus, with your blood. We thank you, Lord, that they are covered by you, that their future uh, is in your hands, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that they are on the narrow path, Lord, uh, with you, and that you are leading the way. And so we pray that you would go before them. We pray your blessing on them, and we pray that the light of Christ would shine through their lives in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, we got one more for you. Last but not least, Doug, Doug Brandon. Where's Doug? And uh, Doug today is accompanied by his, his brother-in-law who has been uh, a, a spiritual influence in his life. So, Doug, I know you. Yeah. Hi, you guys that don't know me, uh, my name's Doug. I've been going to Sojourn for a little over a year now. A um, little bit about myself. Um, I guess I always called myself a Christian. I always said I believe in God, but I didn't really live a Christian way. I lived very selfish. I lived in all the ways that I desired from God. Um, I um, was going through some really hard times. And uh, so I would say, yeah, there's a God, but did I really know there was a God? I didn't take the time to read. I didn't take the time to listen to people. I was stuck in my way. I was controlling. I was arrogant, selfish, put a lot of people through a lot of pain. And I started on a journey because one of my friends said, you know, why don't you just pick the book up and start reading it? You don't want to believe in man, take the book and read what God has written already. And uh, so um, I started started reading. I started my journey. I went to a couple of different churches. Um, and along the way, I, I recognized later that God was with me the whole time throughout each church I went to. And um, the last place I went to was a little over a year ago, which was here. A great friend of ours, Denise and Mike, invited me to come to Sojourn. And let me tell you, when I walked in that door, I felt so much conviction and I felt so much of the Holy Spirit that... <sighs> I spent the whole time trying to hold my tears back and uh, it was just so powerful. Um, and as I was leaving, you know, Tom, the way that he is, you know, he very personal, goes up to everybody, hey, hey, he comes over to me, oh, you think I can pray over you? <laughs> I looked at him, I said, I said, no. I said, because I felt unworthy. I didn't feel valued. I left there that day, and uh, on my way home, I spoke to God and I prayed to him. I asked for him to come into my heart and that he is my father. And although I've stumbled along the way, I strive to be more like him and so thankful that he is our father no matter what we do, good or bad. When we're there to fall, he picks us up. And when we're celebrating, things are good. He's there to celebrate with us. and. I must say that everybody here has done the same. I've had guys come alongside me and pick me up. But I've also had men and women cry with me as well. And thank you, everybody.
Pastor Doug, have you repented of your sins and received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I have. And do you commit to follow him all the days of your life? I do. And Doug, today we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. a little bit of what this means uh, for Doug in this moment and we thank you Lord uh, for, for this step of faith. We thank you for what you're doing in his heart. We thank you that uh, that his life after all these years is surrendered to you Lord Jesus and we thank you that you never fail and that you are the one who's leading the way. That you are the one who restores everything that's broken. That you are the one who saves uh, to the uttermost that you are the one who redeems by your blood. And we thank you that Doug is redeemed today by the blood of Jesus, uh, and that he is your son and that you are his father. And we pray today that he would know that, Lord, even in this moment in a really significant way, that he is loved by you as, as his son. And so we pray today, Holy Spirit, would you fill Doug uh, in a powerful way today, Lord. We pray that you would breathe upon him, that you would saturate him, just as he's been saturated with these waters today, Lord, uh, that, that he would have your power and your presence all the days of his life. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Would you stand as we worship our